dear students we'll pass on to the next part of the lesson the principles of inheritance that is genetic disorders the genetic disorders together also called a syndrome together called a syndrome what is a syndrome a syndrome is nothing but a group of signs and then there is symptoms signs and the symptoms that occur together and characterize a particular particular abnormalities a group of signs and symptoms that occur together and just characterize a particular abnormality that is called a symptom so a genetic disorder or syndrome is caused due to an abnormality in individuals due to an abnormality in individuals there are many causes for genetic disorders we have a range of actually causes the first one mutation in a single gene for example a dominant gene may be mutated to a recessive gene that may cause the development of the disease another one addition or subtraction of entire chromosome so addition means you see that one see suppose this is a chromosome a part of the chromosome is added this is called addition or we have a deletion of a part of the chromosome so this is a deleted fragment addition or subtraction of entire chromosome either a part of chromosome is added or a part of chromosome is deleted that is called subtraction or we have the addition or subtraction of entire set of chromosomes addition or subtraction of entire set of chromosomes for example if you have two again we have addition of one chromosome or two chromosomes or removal of one chromosome or removal of two chromosomes at the maximum or the addition of entire set of chromosomes like this n 2n 3n like that, 4n so the entire set of chromosomes that is the entire set of chromosomes a total number of chromosomes is out these are all the various causes we can say for the development of genetic disorders now we can classify the genetic disorders into the following types what are the two major types of genetic disorders there are two major types of genetic disorders one mendelian disorders mendelian disorders mendelian disorders this is type one another one chromosomal disorders
In your syllabus given, only three disorders. Thalassemia, feed and kitten urea, and penis. Now let's take thalassemia. Now what is thalassemia? It is an autosomal recessive disorder. Here, the destruction of hormones is occurred due to the production of abnormal chemoglobin. Destruction of hormones is occurred due to the production of abnormal hemoglobin. Now if you are taking hemoglobin, hemoglobin is formed of two components. Hemoglobin is formed of two components. One heme. One heme. Another one globin. Heme is an iron containing compound and a globin is a protein formed of four polypeptide chains. Four polypeptide chains. A total of 586 amino acids. All the chains together can be 586 amino acids. The four polypeptide chains are two alpha chains and two beta chains. Two alpha chains and two beta, two beta chains. The thalassemic persons have defects in either alpha chain, that is a globin chain, or beta globin chain. That results in the production of abnormal hemoglobin, leading to the destruction of hormones. That results in anemia. So it is a kind of anemia where the destruction of hormones occur due to the production of abnormal hemoglobin, either in one of the alpha chains or in one of the beta chains or both. So this is a race. Now let's go for the types of thalassemia. There are two types of thalassemia. One is called alpha thalassemia, another one beta thalassemia. Alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia. Alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia. For the production of that is alpha chain. For the production of alpha chain, that is what is called alpha globin chain. I can write in this way. Two genes are needed. Two genes are needed. That is HBA1 and HBA2. And these genes are present in chromosome number 16. Chromosome 16. Suppose we are taking this chromosome 16, this is chromosome 16, the autosome, there we have the genes HBA1, common plus chromosomes. This is one pair of genes. And this is another pair of genes, HBA2. These are the two genes located in chromosome 16, responsible for the synthesis of alpha globin chain. The mutation occurs in any one of the four genes and calculating together four genes, any one of the four genes, then it resulted in the development of alpha thalassemia, leading to the production of abnormal hemoglobin, that is alpha globin, that causes the destruction of hormones and that results in thalassemia alpha. So four genes, mutation in one or more of the four genes. Either one gene or two genes or three genes or four genes together that be different. That results in the production of abnormal alpha globin. That results in alpha thalassemia. Now the beta thalassemia. The beta globin synthesis depends on a single gene. Beta globin synthesis depends on a single gene located. Now this is HB, HB, a single gene, located in chromosome number 11, chromosome number 11. Now this is the 16th chromosome, I am taking here, this is the 11th chromosome. We have the genes HB, B, HB, B. This is the gene, assuming that may be located in one of the lobes, maybe 6 or 7. 
when there is a mutation in one or both the genes, we consume these are the two genes responsible for the synthesis of beta globin G. And when there is a mutation or even deletion also in one or both the genes that resulted in what is called beta thalassemia. And it is also called by name Coolis anemia. Coolis anemia. In both the cases, there is a production of abnormal hemoglobin, which results in the destruction of our bases, leading to anemic condition. Now, Coolis anemia was reported actually by the person against the name. Now, in the case of Coolis anemia, the beta globin production is increased, leading to the destruction of our bases. As a result, the person will also die. So it is very common actually. So the thalassemic child dies at the age of 17. There is a chance of getting the death of the child at the age of 17. In all cases, so it is an autosomal recessive disorder, types alpha and beta thalassemia. And the causes of this work also. Let us go to the next autosomal recessive gene disorder. What is called phenyl ketoneuria, another autosomal recessive gene disorder, simply called PKU. As it was reported by Folling, this is called Folling's disease. Another name for this one, Folling's disease. Now it is an example for one gene, one enzyme hypothesis. What is one gene, one enzyme hypothesis? There is a metabolic pathway. The metabolic pathway involves a series of reactions starting from the initial substance, the precursor. Here S1, then it is being converted to S2, S3, and the end product S4. So this is what is called biosynthetic pathway. Each biosynthetic pathway is catalyzed by an enzyme. Here it represents E1, conversion of S1 to S2 by E1. Similarly, conversion of S2 to S3 by E2 and S3 to S4 by E3. And each enzyme is produced under the control of a particular gene. For example, E1 enzyme is coded by gene E1, E2 by G2 and E3 by G3. So, this is enzyme, this is the gene. Now, the biosynthetic pathway is taking place normally if all the enzymes are produced. Sometimes what will happen? There is a mutation in a particular gene. For example, this G1 dominant gene gets converted into a recessive gene. So that what is happening, there is no production of enzyme E1 or an abnormal enzyme is produced or an abnormal enzyme is produced. So that there is no conversion of S1 to S2. This is called metabolic law. That results in the accumulation of what is called actually S1 leading to the disorder. So, biosynthetic pathway block, that is called metabolic block, due to mutation in gene, due to abnormal production of a particular enzyme or absence of enzyme. That's why it's an example for one gene, one enzyme hypothesis. This concept was given by Badel and Tatum. Badel and Tatum, one gene, one enzyme, one enzyme hypothesis. Now, how to just correlate this one with this? Now, female ketone urea resulted because of a metabolic block in the metabolism of phenyl alanine. Now the phenyl alanine is converted into phosphor tyros. Let's assume this is S1, this is S2, the final product. So this is what is called the raw material and that is the final product. Now the conversion is brought about by the enzyme phenyl alanine hydroxylase in the liver. This enzyme is coded by the G, what is called PAHG, present in the 12th chromosome. Present in the 12th chromosome. When the gene undergoes mutation, there is no production of this enzyme. So that what will happen? Phenylalanine accumulates in the blood. It is being converted into phenyl pyruvic acid. Phenyl pyruvic acid. So it is excreted in urine, excreted in urine. That is the main symptom of the disease, phenyl ketone urea. So it is a keto acid. 
So that's why it's called phenyl ketone blue. What are the symptoms? Hypopigmentation of the skin. That makes light color of the skin. Then each itching sensation. Then sometimes that is mousy odor. Mousy odor just like a rat smell on the body surface. Mousy odor. In all genetic disorders, we have mental retardation. Here too, there is a mental retardation. So, light color of the skin, mental retardation, itching sensation, mouse odor. These are some of the symptoms related to phenylketonuria of Rodex disease. Students, I will pass on to another autosomal recessive gene disorder, albinism. It is also an example of one gene, one enzyme hypothesis. Again, it is also an inborn error of what is called inherited disease. Inborn error of inherited disease. The meaning for inborn error, error that occurs right from the birth in the gene. And the concept of book was written by Carroll. What is called inborn error of metabolism. Because of error in the metabolism due to error in the gene, that is mutation, that disease is resulted. So that's what we call inborn error of inherited disease, autosomal recessive gene disorder. Now here too, the biosynthetic pathway involves the metabolism of an amino acid tyrosine. This is amino acid tyrosine. Now it's being, so let's consider this is S1. This tyrosine gets converted to 3,4-dihydroxyphenylalanine, simply called as DOPA. That's S2. With the help of enzyme tyrosinase, this is an enzyme present in melanocyte of the skin. Melanocyte, the cell where the melanin pigmentation or melanin pigment is formed. The cell where the melanin pigment is formed is called melanocyte, which contains an enzyme tyrosinase. This is responsible for the conversion of 3, 4 dihydroxyphenylalanine to melanin if it occurs normally when the enzyme is present. But when the gene undergoes mutation, for example, this is G2 into what is called the recessive gene, that results in no production of tyrosinase enzyme or defective enzyme synthesis occurs. So that there is no formation of melanin pigment and making the persons or making the albino to suffer. There's a reason, absence of melanin pigment in the melanocyte. The melanocytes are present in normal numbers, though they are present in normal numbers without melanin pigment. It makes the person albin. That is albinism, albino, the process. Now what are the symptoms? Milky white color skin. Milky white color skin, that is called albinism. Photophobia. So normally the melanin pigment is present in the skin, then has and eyes. That is in the correct coat. When the pigment is absent, the person is unable to see the object in bright sunlight. They are abnormally sensitive to light. The condition is called photophobia. Abnormally sensitive to light. This is because of the absence of melanin pigment in the choroid coat of that is human eye. That is called photophobia. Abnormally sensitive to light. The absence of melanin in the skin in some cases, all the three parts are lacking melanin pigment. In some cases, only the skin and hair alone lacking melanin pigment. Or in some cases, they are lacking melanin pigment in eyes. If all the three sides are affected, then it's called generalized albinism. If you have albinism in skin and hair loss of pigmentation, this is what's called partial albinism. If that is albinism occurs in eyes, this is called ocular albinism. So, it is due to an inborn error of metabolism, a metabolic block, hence we have inborn error of inherited disease. Okay, this is a constant, also an example for one gene, one enzyme hypothesis, just like phenyl ketone urea, that is also due to inborn error of metabolism. Students, let us have a discussion about autosomal dominant gene disorder. So, I seen already autosomal recessive gene disorders, thalassemia, 
phenyl ketone urea and albenes. Here, it is an autosomal dominant limb disorder caused by a dominant gene. Some of the examples for autosomal dominant limb disorder Huntington's chorea, then polydactyly. I will come back to this Huntington's chorea, that is only one disorder given in your book. Polydactyly, this is presence of extra digit. Some persons have the sixth digit or the sixth toe or the sixth finger. That is called polydactyly. It is a condition, not a disease. Syndactyly, sin means union. Union of two digits, the fusion of two digits. That is called syndactyly. Bradydactyly, dactyly, dactyly means arrangement of digits. Bradydactyly, presence of short digits. The digits are short. So these are the examples for autosomal dominant gene disorder, somewhat also. But we have only one disorder given in your book, Huntington's chorea. The name is given after, that is, a person, Huntington, George Huntington, was a person reported this disease. Now, this is the first ever known, first ever known, late acting dominant gene disorder, first ever known. The meaning for that one, it was the first disease, autosomal dominant disease report. Late acting, it is not affecting the individuals below 35. Affecting the individuals at the age of 35. That means the disease will be expressed after 35. That is called late acting. As it is caused by dominant gene, this is called dominant gene disorder. The affected gene is present in chromosome number 4. I mentioned already it affects at the age of 35 to 45. This is because of active mutation in the gene where you have some mutations occur in the DNA model. What are the symptoms? One, involved in jerking of the volatile muscles. Jerking, that is a tremor of the body, twitching of the muscles. Then the central nervous system is progressively degenerated. Then physical and mental deterioration, both the physical as well as what is called the mental ability have gone down. Deterioration that is being destroyed, reduced. And some psychological problems also. So it is one, it is a only dominant gene disorder that is given in your book. So I don't want to go further other diseases. Thank you.